and making that long-awaited ETF a lot more likely. We're very close right now. Joining us now, someone's very much got a dog in that fight, ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood. Kathy, you're one of nine applicants for a spot Bitcoin ETF. It looks like the SEC is going to be forced to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF. What, if any, communications have you had with the SEC about your application? Where are we in this whole thing? Well, uh, it was uh, publicized and disclosed, uh, I think it was last week, that um, we had responded to uh, SE, the SEC's request for information around our, our uh, Bitcoin filing, uh, and we responded. And that's basically all we can say. Uh, I think many people think the fact that the Fed, uh, I mean the Fed, the SEC, um, chose to ask questions is a change in behavior. Uh, and therefore, I do think hopes are rising that a or a number of Bitcoin ETFs will be approved. Yeah, the, the, my understanding is the court now is going to issue a mandate about how to enforce their decision here to the SEC, and their SEC is going to basically follow that mandate. Everybody is assuming at this point that they'll probably approve most of the Bitcoin ETFs by the end of the year. Is that, that's a reasonable assumption at this point. They lost the court case. They chose not to appeal it at this point. Right. Uh, and I do believe uh, uh, maybe the reason they're saying by the end of the year, early next year, I know our final deadline on this filing is January 10th. And so uh, and I think we're first in line. But as you say, uh, uh, a number of uh, a number of BT, uh, Bitcoin ETFs uh, could be approved at the same time. Now, your uh, flagship ARK Innovation Fund's up 20 percent this year. You're outperforming the S&P. But you've had significant outflows this year. Can, can you talk about that? You, you know, you're outperforming, and yet you're having outflows. Well, tell us a little yeah. bit about what impact, for example, higher rates are having on your holdings this year. That seems to be a major issue. Well, I, I think there are a couple of things going on. Um, if you'll remember, in late 20 and early 21, the flows were enormous into our funds. And uh, you know, I was, I was uncomfortable at the time. Uh, uh, because we thought there was a lot of momentum uh, chasing going on. And, and we said at that time, keep some powder dry. Little did we know how, how, how big the correction would be. Uh, this is sort of the flip side of that. Uh, we're feeling much more comfortable right now. Uh, but we did have, uh, through July, a very significant uh, rally. I do think there's been some profit taking there. Uh, and I do think, as you say, interest rates, rising rates have concerned a lot of people. There's been a shift into cash. And we've seen very recently a shift into, uh, into bonds. Uh, and interestingly, the flows into bonds would suggest that we should not be far behind. Because if bonds are going to rally, and we think they will, at some point here, as inflation continues to come down, as the economy continues to go through rolling recessions of sorts, uh, we think that the, uh, the backdrop will be right for a resurgence in growth stocks generally, uh, and in particular, long duration innovation growth assets like ours. My colleague Scott, Scott's got a question here, Scott. All right. Hi, Kathy. Great to have you back Hi, on the Scott. Halftime Report. So given what you just Thank said, you. do you not believe in higher for longer? Uh, I don't, and uh, we don't, I should say. Um, if, we, if, we, if we're paying attention to company earnings, and some of these uh, uh, are companies uh, we're exposed to, others not, um, you'll see at both the high end and the low end of the consumer uh, spectrum in terms of price points, uh, you've got Domino saying, hey, it's really weak out there. We've got to do more promotional activity. And you've got LVMH, same thing. Both of those happened last week. We're paying attention to company reports. And I understand the economic statistics are, are volatile and showing uh, strength and then weakness. Uh, we're paying atten attention to our companies. And it does seem like the consumer is starting to give way here. Yeah, interesting. Let me ask you about a specific stock that you sold, and that's NVIDIA. Do you regret <laughs> selling it? You called it, quote, really expensive. I will note that the forward PE of NVIDIA is literally half of Tesla's forward PE. 
So how can NVIDIA be really expensive with Tesla not being so? And do you regret selling it? Um, we, we own it in our specialized funds. We've taken it down everywhere. And um, this is portfolio management. Uh, we see NVIDIA. Uh, you might say it is less expensive than Tesla. We think the upside surprises on Tesla during the next five years, remember we have a five-year investment time horizon, are going to be substantially more than NVIDIA's, uh, mostly because most analysts do not believe that autonomous uh, as a taxi platform for, for Tesla is going to be a part of the story. We disagree. And with that, we see incredible revenue and margin expansion. NVIDIA's margins are already quite high, having entered the 70s, the gross margins. Uh, Tesla's are in the 20s, and we think they will scale into the 60s and 70s as autonomous takes off. Uh, so uh, Tesla, we believe, is the biggest AI project, or autonomous uh, driving is the biggest AI project in the world. NVIDIA has been critical to providing the infrastructure to enable this and so many other things to happen. All, all uh, praises to NVIDIA. Uh, we think that a lot of people understand how important NVIDIA is in this ecosystem, and they do not understand how, uh, how much each dollar of hardware spent is going to pull uh, software through. We think it's on the order of uh, 20 times. Uh, so we think NVIDIA is going to be a good stock. We think the stocks in our portfolio, and we've written a paper on, uh, on uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's titled Investing in Artificial Intelligence, Where Will Equity Value Surface? Uh, you can read that on uh, arc-funds.com and see how we're a really good diversification into this AI world. Many think that the winners are going to be uh, the, the megatech uh, companies uh, who have uh, had such strong performance over the years. We are not sure. We are not sure. Uh, uh, Chat GPT could be the best thing that ever happened to Google and that it lit a fire under Google to get its own AI um, uh, into the market uh, more profoundly. Or it could be a, the worst thing in that uh, it's going to lose its advertising franchise if we're all just on uh, chat GPT looking for our answers. All right, Kathy, thank you very much. We've got to have much more with Kathy Wood coming up on ETF Edge at 1.10 p.m. Eastern time. Now, Kathy's going to talk more about Bitcoin and where we're at on that. She's going to talk about her concentrated tech investment picks, including more on AI and her new foray into European investor. We're going to hear all about her new purchases of a big European company. She'll be joined by Tom Leiden, vice chairman of Vetify. That's ETFedge.cnbc.com. Scott, back to you.